Hey, it's Dry Bear. And if you're just beginning your journey into Wild Hearts, today we're gonna cover everything that you need to know to get started in the game. We'll cover all the progression mechanics, the gameplay loop, all the mechanics you need to be aware of in combat and outside of combat, plus some tips and tricks to help you move throughout your story. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe for more gaming content. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear, come by and say hi. And we'll begin with the first mechanic you encounter for the most part is going to be the dragon Karakuri. And this is your ability to build within the world space and actually have deployable stations, useful items and utilities that affect your ability to engage in the world. Depending on your platform, you'll be able to bring up your Karakuri menu, which the first one you'll, you'll have open here is going to be your combat Karakuri. And I'll talk about that later on in the video. But you activate this, or at least on PlayStation, you D-pad up and you will activate the Dragon Karakuri, which is all your useful items. Things like campfires, tents, workstations, drying racks, scouting towers, and zip lines, so on and so forth. Super useful for being able to interact with that, but there is a limit on how this system works. There are these pits all around, these dragon pits all around the map. You have to activate these and level them up to unlock more dragon pit capacity. You'll see that on the right side of the screen here. Each one of these categories are resources that will be utilized by your buildings that you're trying to create, and the required materials for these upgrades are shown down below. These are usually the crystals that come from that region, that map that you're on, like Mist Crystal, and then there's a specific crystal you get for hunts as the second resource, and that's typically how those are leveled up. But you'll find these dragon pits all over the map. They'll start out just pink. And you look on the map, you'll see which ones you have claimed and which ones you haven't. They have this icon with the flame on top of it. You go to these and you'll use your resources to activate them and level them up. And you can level them up from the main menu, from the map as well, once you have them activated for the first time. The most important resource that you create with these is going to be your tent. You can only have a limited number of these and they do cost quite a lot to create. But once you create them and place them down, they will work as a fast travel location and a spawn point. You, they require less resources if you use them inside of a campsite, but if you put them anywhere, they'll cost more and you can still use them. The next most useful is going to be these scouting towers here. These allow you to not only search for kimono, the hunting towers, and you can increase the range of them. When you have them on the map, you can actually show their range to see exactly where they're scanning and where they're showing. So you know where you can find the kimono. They can also help you find campsites that you can put down to create these special campsites to spawn at and fast travel to. You'll also be able to create these zip lines. These are listed here as the flying vine. One thing I will recommend with these is if you have them in good spots, you can leave them. But if you end up putting them in a spot where you don't really need it, you just use it for the zip, you might want to just deconstruct it after you use it because there's a limited number of these you can have on the map in general. You can set these up to have really cool locations to skip over. You can cut off uh, monsters that are running away from you and secure the kill a lot easier. And they allow you to go in both up and down directions, which is super nice. If you haven't activated the Dragon Pit, it'll look just like this. And to activate it, you walk up to it, use whatever keybind it tells you, you activate it, and you'll use the resource that you've collected in order to activate it and get it leveled up. You'll find crystals for these in the area all over the place, but the biggest source of these is always gonna be these carcasses that you'll find here. These always give you a large chunk of the crystals you need to upgrade your dragon pits. Now let's talk about gear. It's actually quite similar to many hunting games that you've played before. There's some cool new mechanics to be aware of. First of all, there are eight weapons in the game. I have a video going over all of them if you're looking for an overview. And if there's interest, comment down below if you'd like to see individual weapon guides for each of them. You'll start with these five here, the first five, the Bladed Wagasa, the Maul, the Bow, the Nodachi, and the Katana. And then when you reach chapter two in the story, you'll unlock the Hand Cannon, the Claw Blade, and the Karakuri Staff. Each one of these is quite different from each other and they all have really cool mechanics. Now here's a super fast recap. The Karakuri Katana is a Katana medium range, short range Katana. You build up charge and then you transform it into a whip blade for added attacks and extra damage on top. Nodachi is a big hunk of metal. It has big sweeping attacks. You can charge it and while you're charging it, you drain stamina to release a big attack. So you're managing swinging the weapon plus charging the weapon to get big hits. The bow is super cool. You'll mark the target with a certain kind of arrow and then you'll detonate those arrows with a different kind of arrow. So you're switching between tagging the target with arrows and then detonating them. 
The maul is a super fun weapon. It's a very slow hammer. You swing and hit, but if you use if you press active buttons for the special ability at just the right time, you'll be able to activate more and more abilities and engage with more combos. So it's more of a timing weapon. You want to activate just the right time, hitting those quick time events, and you can hit some really nasty hits. The Wagasa is the only weapon in the game that has a parry, but it hits really fast and has lots of mobility. Hand Cannon has a laser beam and a bunch of range shots, plus some modified abilities. The Claw Blade functions kind of like Attack on Titan. You can link in and grapple to a target and keep that grapple attached as you zoom around in the air and dive in for fast attacks. And lastly, the Karakuri Staff is at its base, a staff that has special weapon abilities that transform it into four other weapons, each one of those being stronger than the last. So if you want a really unique tech weapon, this is for you. When you craft a new weapon, it'll start out as its base form with no skills, uh, inherent skills in it or inherited skills. What's cool about this process is that you can find different pathways to each versions of these weapons. You can see the name of them, the Sal Tree Mall, Sal Tree Mall 2. They all have different representations, different elements, and different weapon types. And what's cool is the pathway you take matters because when you upgrade a weapon, you will upgrade it to the new form. However, if it has an inherent skill and you transition to a new form, you will be able to keep the weapon inherent skills and inherit it to the next form. So while you can reach these nodes in different ways, the pathway you take will give you different skills that have different benefits, and you can make your own weapon from that process. They have different elements on them and weapon types, and you can see the weaknesses of the monster in the monster encyclopedia. When it comes to armor, you have armor sets that you pick up as you unlock more monsters and get more materials. Each one of the pieces has its own passive skills on it, stats and uh, resistances, plus required materials. But there's an added system in this game that doesn't really exist in others, which is super neat. Not only can you mix and match to make your own perfect set based on the skills that you want on the item itself, however, there is a leaning system. So if you look in the bottom middle of the screen, you can see how I'm either kimono on the right or human on the left. And then at the top of the screen, you'll see these categories, human path modification and kimono path modification. This is a modification system for each piece of gear so if you look at a piece of gear on the right side, you see how it says blaze recovery on there. That's the skill this, this item has. If you go to an item that has a, a leaning skill like this one, you see this has verve, boost attack and defense when it max health. However, it has a human icon next to it. So in order to lock this skill, I need to do the human path modification on this piece of item. So you actually get certain benefits and different bonuses as you mix and match the gear and modify them to lean them more monstrous or more human in their development, and you'll get new skills and combinations that are only available in that. And aside from that, you're just crafting the gear that you like, getting the stats that you want, making sure you get whatever you want that works, and putting it together in a really cool way. The next thing you want to be aware of is your talisman slots. You have your weapon, and you have your five pieces of gear that you equip that all have their other pieces. But you also have your talisman slot here. So you'll be able to equip up to five of these that all have different passives on them, and you'll find these in very many ways. You'll find them from completing hunts. You'll find them hidden in the world. There's secret caves you can unlock to col collect talismans. You'll find those from special missions. So as you play the game, keep an eye out for more and more talismans. And then you can equip these to your character to get even more benefits. Next, let's talk about quests and farming. How you progress in the game and how you collect materials to craft even better gear. First off, it is a hunting game. So to collect materials, you will be hunting monsters or kimono of various sizes. There is an encyclopedia. If you open your main map menu, depending on what platform you're on, you can tab over to the uh, encyclopedia, which shows all the different creatures in the game and the resources that you can get. For the giant kimono, these major monsters, you can tab through and select the one you want. You will find their weaknesses. You'll find their uh, effectiveness and weapons, ailments, where the weak points are. And you can also discover what rewards you get for hunting. If there is a reward that specifically needs something to break or something to be severed, you'll see that marked with a special number on, on top of the icon here, and you'll be able to pick through that. Also, an added benefit, if you want to see them enraged, they added a, a cool feature here where you can see what they look like when they're enraged versus not, though it's pretty obvious, I think, when you see them in game. So if there's a specific resource you want from one of the monsters, the Cyclopedia will tell you how to get that. Next is small kimono. These have a special mechanic in this game that I haven't seen in any hunting game. And that is you can either slaughter these animals because they're minor kimono, 
or you can sneak up on them and pet them. Each action will result in a different resource being gained. And you'll see that listed in the top right. The, what, the icon with the sword tells you what you get from killing it, and then the icon with the hand tells you what you get from petting it. In order to successfully pet a small kimono, you do have to crouch and sneak up behind them, and then you'll get a prompt that shows up to either slay them or pet them. And depending on what resource item you need, you will then be able to get that item from that process. So if you're looking for something specific, check your small kimono cyclopedia and see if you have to start petting them or you have to start killing them. And lastly are the small critters that go all over the areas. What's different about these is you're not trying to kill them, you're actually trying to catch them, which is a little bit different. And some of these are actually quite big, like the crane here. You'll see the crane walking and all you have to do is catch up to it and grab it uh, with your grab button, whatever platform you're on, and you'll be able to keep this uh, as a pet. So you actually collect it. I think for most of these, if you damage them too much, they'll vanish and die and you can't collect them. So you do actually have to catch up to them and grab them, which can be annoying for some of them. Like the, the flamethrower bats are, are pretty rough because they fly pretty high, but you do have to jump up and grab them as they're flying through the world. So be aware that you do have these jumping around if they're critter sized you have to run up and catch them and grab them quest wise you can see all your quests from the map your main quest is this orange triangle orange diamond that you see listed here this is your main story progression you also have these assignments that have this scroll icon you'll have these all over the place you just find the NPC that has it collect it and complete it and then when you go to your main map you can actually see when you have assignments to complete you can go complete them come back and turn them in and then when your main story is somewhere you can definitely uh find that and do these exact same thing. If you find yourself in need of gold, there are items that just provide gold. They'll have this coin icon, they're a commodity. So if you collect these and you're running low on gold, be sure to stop by the shop, uh, which is this character right over here, and you'll be able to go to sell goods and you'll activate this and you can just sell these off and make a whole bunch of gold that way. You'll also find it from completing assignments and that sort of thing. So you'll find her, the general goods store here, the Crimson Treasury, You'll come over here and you can uh, turn those in and sell them for extra gold. On the wharf, you can also get fisherman jobs. This is a great way to find resources and get materials as you're playing through the game. So you'll find that on the wharf on the left side here in the main town of Minato. Come up to this guy and talk to him and then check available jobs. And as you go through these, these are basically like research assignments um, You can or investigations. You just collect these, do whatever it takes to finish them, and then turn them in and you'll get a whole bunch of rewards you can actually go through and complete them all. And then once you complete them all, it should reset. And then you'll be able to do them all again to get tons of extra resources. This is super useful for the resources. Not only does it give you gold, but there's also some of the resources like core stone that can be use, used in every upgrade and crafting experience. And they're actually kind of tedious to go and collect a whole bunch of core stone. So you do want to be doing these regularly and unlocking them as you go through the story. Additionally, as you progress, you can come up here to the steward's residence and talk to this girl here, and you'll be able to report progress. So you report a hunting success, and as you do these, you'll unlock new things. It'll give you progression through the game. So just check in periodically, and as you complete specific things, just make sure you turn in them turn them into her. You have to talk to her and actually get these uh, updated. But once you do, you get some cool, some cool benefits. Now let's talk about one of the coolest features in this game, the Karakuri. We already talked about the Dragon Karakuri, which are your deployables that you can place out in the world and do your building. However, there's combat Karakuri, which actually adds to the game and is a core feature that you need to be interacting with constantly to really enrich your experience. And there's some awesome things you can do that are unique only to Wild Hearts. So if you're on PlayStation, you just hold L1 on PC and Xbox is going to be different buttons. But this brings up your normal Karakuri menu. And you'll have this cube in front of you. You can set up your Karakuri buttons on your main menu. When you hold this button, you'll see which ones you have equipped and you can change these when you go to the change equipment tab and you'll have these available. So as you play, you require thread to actually place these down. You'll see the number in the bottom middle. That's how much thread you have. And in order to create these, it will cost you thread for a certain amount. If you're looking for more thread, you can harvest them from the monsters, the kimonos that you're, fight, you're facing. But you can also hold like L2 and activate this button out in the world, you can harvest trees, you can harvest rocks and get more thread that way, which is super nice. There's a whole bunch of these to choose from, but you can only have four equipped at a time. And there's a lot to go through when it comes to this. The first ones you'll have is the cube. The cube is placed down just like this. You can stack them up higher if you want. 
And when you walk up to them, you'll climb them and you can jump off of them for an extra boost. This gives you really good new attack opportunities and it does give you special attacks as well. Each weapon has special in attacks that you'll use when leaping off of one of these Karakuris. So in this case, when you're jumping off this and you use an active button, it will do a special attack that comes out of this. And they're actually super fast. You can do them while in combat, uh, activate them and get some cool moves out of them. So the cube is one of the ones, the box is one of the ones that gets you upward lift. If you're looking for forward lift, you can use the spring. It looks like this. You can actually run into it and move forward. You actually do have some iframes from the spring as well. And so if you're about to get hit by an attack, you can aim it to the side and step on it and dash out of the way and resist taking damage as well. You can also put these on top of each other if you want, which makes a really flexible system. So you can put this on top, climb up, get a more forward attack with a higher element. And the attack that you do off the springs is different than the ones you get off the box. So if you dash forward and attack, you'll get a different special attack from the springs than you do from the boxes, which have different interactions, which is super cool. On top of that, the base ones that you'll get is you'll also get this torch, which you activate here. Um, this one you can actually just put down. But what's cool about this is when you run into this, so you see how I run into the spring box and it moves me forward. If you run into the torch, it will activate a special attack and add flame to the weapon that you have. So you can do this, uh, this Hinokami Kagura to the monsters if they're weak to fire damage. But there's also environmental effects like vines in your way that you can use to unlock and open up secret passageways that might unlock your talismans or different paths. The fourth Karakuri you unlock is going to be the helicopter here. You place it down, when you run into it, you'll jump up into the air and it'll give you an aerial move. What's cool about this is you can modify these to go faster or have different properties. And again, with this, when you activate it, you'll get even more special attacks coming off of this uh, and more ways to just interact and re do really cool things. There's others that we can uh, unlock here, but before we go to the other ones, I do want to mention the fusion Karakuri. So, unlike, uh, it, it's a cool system. So you have these individual ones here. While you're holding the Karakuri menu up, look at the top right corner of the screen. You see how it says Bulwark, Elemental Lantern, Healing Mist, Pounder. These are actually ways to combine these together to make special, unique Karakuri that you get from combining these. So the first one, which is super useful, is you see the Bulwark, and that's six square buttons, which is six of my boxes. So if I stand still and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, it'll combine into a bulwark. And that is a fusion Karakuri. You cannot deploy this by itself. You can only deploy these by combining the right Karakuri in one spot. They have to be attached together and exist at the same time, and it'll auto combine. This is one of the first uh, fusion Karakuris you'll unlock in the story. And if any monster charges into these and hits it, they'll be knocked back and thrown onto the ground. So if there's like a big rush that's coming towards you, you can quickly spawn a bulwark on top of it, block it, it'll knock the enemy down, and then you can start punishing them. Super cool. There's other ones that you can do that give you, like the Healing Lantern gives you uh, elemental resistance, which is really nice that you can avoid elemental attacks if you're against a monster that's doing that. The Healing Mist is also super useful. It'll allow you to uh, spawn a Healing Mist area. And there's tons of them like Pounder, Star Bomb, Fireworks, knock enemies out of the air. So if you have the thread for it and you can activate it, um, if there's a flying monster that's flying above you, you can knock them down with the firework. These are huge. So not only are you using these Karakuris to help you in combat with special attacks and moves and motions to get around and avoid things or open up opportunities, but you're also using the fusion Karakuris to counter specific monsters when you see effects, if they're charging you, if they're flying up in the air, if they're setting up for a big attack and you hit them with a bomb, there's all kinds of really fun combinations that exist in the game. Just know that in order to access this menu, you have to have the Karakuri equipped as is, and those combinations that exist are actually specific. And so if you don't have the box equipped, this one specifically here, you won't be able to make a bulwark because a bulwark is made out of six individual boxes. So it is actually a component system that you use with your loadout. So when you go to change your equipment, you can actually set up which Karakuri you want in what spot, and depending on the ones you choose, you can create different combinations that allow you to have the fusion Karakuri specifically. So if we switch it up and we get the stake here, the stake can be placed into walls and be used to climb things, but you can also uh, launch yourself and go out and attack and hit other mobs with that. But you can see that my combinations in the top right have changed. 
In order to get the fusion Karakuris, you have to hit Inspiration, which means you have to have specific Karakuris equipped and you have to face a specific monster. And when you're engaged with that monster, your sound will deafen, you'll get a water drop sound, and a special quick time event will show up on screen. So if you're facing a monster and you have that special quick time event, that means you're unlocking a new fusion Kar Karakuri that you didn't have before. Once you unlock it the first time, like you do it successfully, you'll have it for the rest of the game and you can just use whatever combination you need in order to create it. But in order to unlock it, you have to have a specific combination of them. You can find them online or you can find them in the story. Most of them you'll unlock uh, by being told to or being shown it as you're progressing through the story. The next thing to talk about is the progression system for the Karakuri and that's your Karakuri tree. You can open up your menu and go over to the Karakuri tree here. And this is a very extensive list of ways you can modify. You can unlock new Karakuri, both Dragon Karakuri and Combat Karakuri. And you can also modify the ones that you already have. So this is super cool. I like this system a lot. There's things in here that are non-related to it. The ones that you want to pick up the, the most are going to be these nodes here, the water toters. This one actually increases the maximum amount of potions that you can hold in combat. And so activating these is super nice. And then there's modifications for, like you can make the bulwark more sturdy so it can take more damage before it breaks. You can make your hunting towers have wider range when they're scanning for kimono, which is really nice. You can even weaponize your zip lines or do all kinds of other stuff that are really nice. So you unlock this by going through the map, completing hunts, and unlocking dragon pits. And as you do that, you'll unlock this currency that you can use on your Karakuri tree. Nomenclature-wise, the squares and the diamonds are going to be new Karakuri. The circles are going to be passive effects or buffs. And then you have these big diamonds here, which you unlock by completing specific missions in the story. So you have to kill a specific monster that the story tells you to, and you'll unlock these Karakuri specifically, and then you can use them from then on, and you can equip them. Now let's talk about combat and the world itself, so you can actually get in the game and play it. The first thing that's a really nice change from other uh, hunting games, you can actually start a mission for a specific kimono directly from your map. So if you activate your map, you'll have this main map open, you can go to specific spots for assignments or quests, but if there's a specific kimono that you need to kill for materials, You'll find that on the map itself and you can go from all these different regions and look at it but there actually is a toggle so while you're looking at the map you see in the bottom left the chapter listed you actually can tab through these to get different modifications so if you tab through to chapter one you can get the first mobs that you have chapter two chapter three and so on and what's interesting is as you move through the chapters you'll actually get new and new emergent versions of the kimonos that you can face. But if you need a specific one from earlier on in the story to unlock a new weapon or complete it, you'll want to actually tab back to the chapter and unlock it there. But again, once you find the thing you're looking for, you can complete these hunts just by finding the kimono and activating it, and it'll take you right into the world. Now, once you're in the world, let's talk about combat and movement. We already talked about the dragon karakuri that you can place into the world. You will find collectibles all over the place and you do want to collect these non-stop. You do need a lot of these. Uh, you can find critters you can collect that are floating around. You will find all kinds of things that you need to collect. Collect regularly because you will run out constantly uh, depending on how much you're crafting and upgrading. Once you take damage, you will heal through the water that you collect in the world. In the bottom left, you'll see how I can activate the top to actually drink a water and heal myself. Uh, this is super easy, super nice, and they give you actually a quite generous amount of them. To get more of these waters, you do upgrade your Karakuri tree, which is nice. But if you run out, there's several ways you can replenish them. First is by collecting the healing water in the world like this. Each one of these will give you two that you can fill up. So you can actually get quite a lot of them to keep yourself healthy. You can even improve the amount that you heal through your gear and other modifications. So you'll find the healing water here. If you ever run out in a fight, you need to go collect more of these. But there'll also be ancient trees in the world that have this water drop icon on them. So you want to collect these and activate a special uh, basin right in front of it. And they look like this. They're huge and glowing and massive. They're very hard to miss. And once you activate them, you have to run up to them and activate them for the first time. It will create this little basin in front of them. And what's cool about this is when you drink from here, which you can only do, I believe, once per mission, it doesn't refresh. You drink from here, it'll fully heal you and then add 10 healing waters to your current store so that if you, you know, in between when a monster runs away and you want to restore, you can come to these ancient trees, uh, activate this, get a full heal and 10 more healing waters. 
which is actually really nice. Movement wise, you have combat rolls, which have a generous amount of iframes. You can also modify this with further traits on your gear. You can jump and you can use different attacks when you have those combined. In the top right, you'll have a tutorial for the weapon that you're using that has all the keybinds for the buttons. And this is dynamic. So as you go through hit chains or hit combos, it'll update to tell you what is available and you can use those binds to connect. If you ever wanna test out a weapon or learn it while you're out in the field, you can activate your Karakuri menu, go to Dragon Karakuri, and you can drop down the Training Bear, which you'll unlock through your Karakuri tree. And while you have this down, this is basically a test dummy. It'll show damage, it'll show combos, and you can activate a tutorial mode that will allow you to see, it'll teach you the weapon and all the combinations you can use for that weapon. While running, if you do a dodge, you'll actually do a combat slide, which gives you amazing distance. It does cost a decent amount of stamina, but you can use it Re repeatedly until you run out of stamina, get some distance on it, which is really cool. And you can also run up to most surfaces, most walls and uh, buildings and actually grab on them and start climbing. There's different things you can do off of this, but in general, you'll usually want to, uh, you, you can obviously put down things as well if you really wanted to. You can climb up, use the stake and uh, use it while you're climbing here, which allows you to jump up and do different things with it, which is cool. Uh, but it's really useful to be able to jump onto a wall, move around, climb over, and do that for movement. Next, if you're on a specific hunt, you can uh, seek assistance to do multiplayer or co-op. Uh, when you're on the hunt, you'll have a keybind in the top right that tells you you can request assistance. This is just like a signal flare in Monster Hunter. It calls out and uh, activates online play. And if someone sees your request, they can join in and help you kill the kimono that you're looking for. You can also do this from the campfires in your camps. You can actually go here and click play online, find other hunts and connect to other players. There's also going to be missions in town as well as these hunter gates that you'll find throughout the map that you can run up to and activate online play as well, which is super nice. So if you're playing with your friends, there's a lot of different ways you can connect. You can look for specific monsters uh, or kimonos and ask for assistance, or you can have people come to the gate or you can connect through the campfires or you can join people that ask for assistance. However, if you elect to do solo play, you will be giving a, given a Sukumo, which is this guy right here, behold Buttman in all his glory. You will be able to have this with you in solo play, and he has four different modes that he moves through on his own. And these are listed at the campfire. This is actually quite confusing for me at first, uh, as I tried to figure out exactly what it was uh, doing. You can go to enhance Sukumo at your campfire, and you get uh, resources for this by finding the Sukumos and befriending them all throughout the map. So you can see what cogs you need to upgrade them and have these benefits. While you're on this screen, you can use the tab to tab through cosmetics. This does not change the function of your Sukumo in any way. It is purely cosmetic. I thought it was, but it actually isn't. And on the left side, you can see that he has four different forms. Threader form, assist form, defense form, and attack form. You don't choose this ahead of time. The Sukumo will naturally choose between those as it needs to during the combat, as it chooses and sees fit. So attack form will deal damage. Defense form will pull aggro and taunt this, the uh, kimono, pull it towards it and take aggro. It'll assist form will heal and then threader will help you get resources uh, like recharging threads and things like that. As you collect the Sukumo in the world and get these cogs, you can then upgrade these forms. So when it's using that form, you'll enhance it. But you want to do this for two reasons. Not only does it make Buttman stronger so that you can use him in combat, it gives you better stats, it makes him a lot more useful in general. But as you continue to do it, like you can see right here, it increases the maximum thread that you can hold, which you use to craft Karakuri. So you want to be collecting these throughout the world, upgrading this as much as you can so that as you get through it, you unlock more thread count, which you can use to then create more Karakuri. So that is kind of the gameplay loop. And again, as you're running through the map, you'll see these guys just laying around um, and you'll have to kind of walk up to them and then activate them to befriend them. They'll show up in your campfire and be your friend. Uh, but as you collect them, you'll get more cogs. So look out for these in the world. You're, you'll hear a, spe a special like bamboo chonking sound when you walk near one that might be around. So listen for that sound and then look for them so you can unlock more upgrades for your Sukuma. The last thing I'll leave you with is a special mechanic that only exists inside of Wild Hearts. It's something that you really need to be aware of, and that is the glowing stems that exist on side of the monsters right now. So I'm here with this big boar, but when you see when I get close to his hind legs, you see parts of him that start to glow. 
And that means that underneath that is a special spot that you can damage and break open. And you want to do so because it allows you to get some really nice power-ups as well as a fast way to get bonus threads while you're farming. So you can see how you, as I get close, it starts to glow. And when I damage it, it'll eventually break open. You can actually jump onto these and grab onto them and then charge your hunter's arm by reaching into it. It gives you thread and will also give you special buffs. There's even traits that exist in the game that won't work unless you have your hunter's arm powered up. So you have to do that by knowing that these exist, finding the spot, breaking it, grabbing onto it, which means that you can mount monsters in any way. And then you can just uh, suck out the details from them and use up all your Karakuri. So if you want to make a whole bunch of stuff, spend all your threads, then go to these special spots and harvest them for extra nice resources. And that's exactly what you want to do. So go in here, grab onto it, activate the hunter's arm. You'll suck out a bunch of energy, get this buff. You ever see these, this rainbow color effect that exists on you? Uh, and then you'll have a nice buff and some like strong arm spirit. You see how that activated? Certain traits may require the hunter's arm to be activated. This is a unique mechanic that I didn't understand at first. Uh, but once you can, you just grab it, pull it. It gives you a whole bunch of thread, uh, makes you even stronger. And you want to be aware of this uh, while you're playing the game because I certainly wasn't when I first started. And that's everything. That should get you all through all the new mechanics, the existing things that happen inside of uh, Wild Hearts. This game is absolutely awesome. I'm having a blast with it. And I hope you are too. And I hope that the performance issues get sorted out sh shortly so people can enjoy it. Uh, the people that are having struggles with connecting and, keep, and keeping things running properly. If you got value from this video, leave me a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe for more gaming content. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me or you want to hang out with me live, I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hi. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.